The Texans, Packers, and Ravens have moved on to the next round. Who joins them, Seattle or Washington? Joe Buck leads the crew live with the call. Joe? Hey, Kurt, they are ready for their first home playoff game here at Landover, Maryland, since 1999. As the winners of the NFC East, the Redskins take on the wild card Seattle Seahawks. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. Pam Oliver, Aaron Andrews are both coming up. All right, these are two hot teams coming into this game. Both are rolling in, and for the Seahawks, they're not the same Seahawks you may remember from the past couple of years. They're dynamic at quarterback with Russell Wilson. They've got a great running back in Marshawn Lynch. They're big on defense. They're punishing hitters. They've got speed on the edges, and it is a big challenge here in this game for the rookie RG3 in this Redskins offense. Well, I think the real key for Washington is how healthy is that knee for RG3. He says it's better this week than it was last week. We know last week he was not all that effective running the football. As a result, Alfred Morris really had to carry this team. I thought it was interesting, Joe, in visiting with Pete Carroll. He said, we want RG3 to beat us. And what that means is they want to see if that knee is capable of rushing for over 800 yards as he did throughout this season. And if he's not able to run like we know he can, it's going to be a long day for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, that explosion that he has at the quarterback position, unlike any other quarterback in the NFL. Our comparison of the two quarterbacks brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. Let's go down to the field and start with Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, we will be keeping a watchful eye on RG3, in particular that brace he will reluctantly wear to protect his injured right knee. Griffin doesn't like it. He hates it as a matter of fact, and he threatened to rip it off. We watched him in three warm-ups. He wasn't wearing that brace. Instead, he was going with a thin sleeve. He suspects that trainers will be watching him like a hawk to make sure he doesn't take it off. Please don't take it off. Now for more in Seattle, let's go over to Aaron. Pam, thanks. Russell Wilson has won over the critics and said he wasn't big enough. He wasn't a high enough draft pick. He's helped Seattle win five straight here into the playoff. His offensive coordinator, Daryl Bevel, has said nothing is too big for him. He's the biggest reason why we're here. Russell told us he hasn't shied away from high expectations. His latest one, win a playoff road game for Seattle for the first time since 83. He, was, he wasn't even born yet. Joe, he told us his reaction to that. Just ignore the noise. Hello, noise. Yeah, there's plenty of it here in Maryland where over 80,000 are packed in to watch the Redskins and the Seahawks back after the break. As you look at the Jefferson Memorial before this playoff game on Wild Card Weekend, we give you a look at our Windows 8 Simplify the Game notes. For Seattle, be very physical with the wide receivers and the dynamic RG3. And for Washington, pound the NFL's number one rushing attack. That's how they got here, winning their first division since 1999. Take a break. Come back. Playoff game right around the corner on Fox. card game between the Seahawks and the Redskins and you look at the temperature it is unseasonably warm on the 6th of January 2013 and that bottom line the field condition messy kickers have already changed their shoes it is a sloppy track and almost a slip by Hoshka as he kicks it away and this Niles Paul on the return out to the 20 and that's it if not for paint, we would be looking at a completely brown field with not a lot of blades of grass. And so the footing will be important to check as we go forward. And obviously, for a guy with a bad knee, that's a big deal. Uh, you see Robert Griffin and watching him warm up, Joe. Initially, he came out, he just had a protective sleeve on his knee. And he didn't look like he was moving around all that well during that time. And then when he came out with the rest of the team, 
He put on the big bulky knee brace as you see here. He claims he's healthier than he was last week. We'll see. Starting at the 20 in a toss to the man who ran it more on first down than anybody in the NFL. The rookie Alfred Morris. A gain of eight. And this team does that better than any other in the NFL. Run it. Run it on first down. And a big reason why the group up front. And they are healthy. There were questions about Lichtensteiger left guard. He's playing with a bad ankle. Trent Williams. Mike Shanahan told you he's our best player, and that's saying something. He's a pro bowler at left tackle, and there's Alfred Morris, number 46, a sixth rounder out of Florida Atlantic, number two in the NFL with over 1,600 rushing yards. And already timeout. a timeout. Washington, first team timeout will be a 30-second timeout. You saw those... Players shoving each other. This figures, Troy, to be a physical game. They got into it last year up in Seattle. And so the first play from scrimmage, they were shoving one another. And with all that action, the play clock started to wind down, and RG3 had to spend a timeout. This is last year, week 12. And the primary players, as you see, Leon Washington involved, but it was D'Angelo Hall and Michael Robinson. The fullback getting into it, and this is after play number one. Well, I think you look at these two teams, Joe, and clearly it's going to be a physical game here this afternoon. And which offensive line, which defensive line is going to be able to dominate in the trenches? Second and two. First throw, a completion, first down. Pass is caught by Garcon, and Pierre gets nine. Now the defense, which is big up front, speed on the edges, and they've got defensive backs that are tall and very physical. Brandon Browner coming off a four-game suspension. He is back in the starting lineup across from Richard Sherman. Back to Morris, a lane to run. And two good runs by Alfred Morris to start his day. This one good for nine. Well, we came into this game, Joe, talking about Pete Carroll and what he said to us as far as wanting to make RG3 beat them. Now, they've given the ball a couple times to Alfred Morris, and he's run the ball well on that first down carry. Nine yards, and so here in the early going, at least, doing a nice job mixing it up offensively and not having RG3 having to do much at all and already physical on the outside as you will expect throughout this game second down and one griffin keeps it gets around the block by his tight end paulson and picks up a first down game to three and i thought that was a chance you're going to see robert griffin as he comes off this play fake he extends it all the way to the sideline there was a nice lane inside that block by Logan Paulson and we've seen enough of him throughout this season that when healthy he would have taken that and picked up a nice chunk of yardage and he looks like he's running about like he was last week Joe that time good for three but a first down that's Paulson in motion Griffin keeps it and to the sideline has a man that's Garcon and the former Colts got a first down inside the 25. RG3 off play action. So much of what they do is with that action in the backfield, they protect it up nicely. It gives Pierre Garcon a great opportunity on the outside for a little bit of a double move. He gets Brandon Browner running, and that then creates the separation. Now, remember, Browner, who missed the last four games, is back today, but Pete Carroll said he was going to be watching to see how healthy he is. Toss to the rookie running right. Morris cuts back down inside the five. You see Niles Paul and 
Tyler Columbus the job that they do securing the edge and the running lane that's afforded Alfred Morris. That's a heck of a hole right there for anybody. Russell Wilson watching it as the Redskins are trying to cram it right down the Seahawks throat on the first possession. Now running left. First time he's carried it to the left side, a loss of one. Earl Thomas, the safety, came up to make the stop. Well, this offensive line is really doing a nice job, and I think Pete Carroll's got to be pretty surprised because he seemed to come across pretty confidently the other day in saying that we think we can control Alfred Morris. It's if RG3 gets going that we may have some problems. They haven't had to rely much on RG3 as a runner. He's made a couple nice throws, but Alfred Morris right now doing the damage. Lichtensteiger is down. He's been bothered by a sprained ankle. He needs help to get off the field. So while he walks away, we'll step away for just a minute. Second and goal when we come back. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. In the history of this great franchise, a history that dates back to the Late 30s, 1937. That's what the Redskins accomplished on the ground this year. Franchise record in rushing yardage. And Josh Laribas takes over at left guard for Lichtensteiger. Griffin back across. Incomplete with Morgan making the catch, but out of the back of the end zone. Gonna see is if he's able to get his feet down. Good call right there. He gets his left foot down, Joe, before he gets knocked out. And you see they sprint. They sprint RG3 out to the right and, and somewhat of a risky throw. You always got to be a little bit worried when you come to the backside like that, but it opened up nicely, just unable to get it on to him soon enough to where he could get both feet in bounds. Now third down and goal. Griffin, end zone for the touchdown. Evan Royster. Great job by Evan Royster as he comes off on the option route. He sees the linebacker run out. He just hooks up and they put the ball right on him. A good read there between Royster and RG3. Royster did not have a touchdown reception all season long. Nine play drive, 80 yards, five minutes off the clock. So far, so good for number 10, RG3, up by seven. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light Sports Fan App. Download the app today. First career receiving touchdown. As RG3 found Evan Royster. And what a great statement here to open the game for the Redskins offensively. They had only two opening drive touchdowns this season. The Seahawks gave up only two all year. Fullback hits a line drive. That's Washington, number two in the NFL, returning kicks. That's why he's on the roster out across the 25, knocked down at the 28. Well, you're going to see Cam Chancellor, the safety here. He runs out, and then it's just a hookup here. It's an option route by Royster, and he's just going to find the hole in the defense. It's zone coverage. He gets across the goal line, hooks it up, and then RG3 just puts it right on him. And, boy, the Redskins had everything going there. A lot of Alfred Morris, and then for Robert Griffin, he did a nice job throughout that series of throwing the football. Third round draft pick Russell Wilson. 75th pick overall. Seahawks have their man. He keeps it and wants to go deep. Overthrows everyone. Intended receiver Doug Baldwin, and I liked what offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel said about 
Russell Wilson, he said, I have to, as the play caller, fight the urge to ease him in. I've got to let him play. He's earned it, and he really has. What an unbelievable, almost out of nowhere story for number three. I think they learned that throughout the season. They tried to ease him in early in the year. They were inconsistent offensively, and once they kind of cut him loose, he has played exceptionally well. They did not want to hold him back coming into this game. Second down and ten. Wilson has a receiver. Pass is caught. It's the tight end, Zach Miller. And with Williams on his back, a gain of eight. So third and two coming up. Offensively up front. They've got a couple of pro bowlers. With J.R. Sweezy at right guard, a guy who was drafted as a defensive lineman. Now he's a starting guard in a playoff game. And then Marshawn Lynch is a beast at number 24 out of the backfield. Wilson in trouble. Down he goes. London Fletcher. With help from Stephen Bowen. It's three and out. London Fletcher here off the edge. You see the discipline that this defensive front has, and they just keep playing. And as we know, Russell Wilson, once he tries to break contain he becomes awfully dangerous and now standing job defensively after the offense goes down and scores forcing a three and out Ryan the punt. Crawford slides down and has some room good field position for the Redskins Gresham downfield to make the stop defense for the Redskins. A good start on that side of the ball. They have it up seven. Today's game is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation that excites. By Burger King. Come celebrate 55 years of the Whopper sandwich at Burger King with the return of the angry Whopper. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Well, this crowd is charged up. This organization has been revitalized by number 10 and number 46, the running back Alfred Morris behind him. Griffin keeps it. Has a chance to get rid of it, but he keeps it and will turn it into a positive play. A gain of one, and we go down to the field in Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, Griffin led that Redskins scoring drive. He had problems with that communications radio in his helmet again. Remember last week, they had a terrible time with that problem, too. They're working feverishly to get the backup fixed right now. And meanwhile, Corey Lichtensteiger, he is questionable. He's re-aggravated that ankle. Thank you. So because of that, Josh Loribas, who's a rookie, third-round pick out of SMU, who got a lot of work right, during right, the right. week. Is in at left Set. guard, second down and nine. Let out. Let out. Toss to Morris. And he's had a lot of room to run here early, a gain of six. KJ Wright on the stop for the Seahawks. Looks like there might have been a little bit of confusion there in the backfield with RG3 as far as how he came out. We see Pierre Carson now going out of the game. As we know, he's been battling through that toe injury that, that cost him six of the first nine games. And a lot of people thought maybe his season was going to end, but he came back and he's really been productive and has helped this football team. That looks, he's grabbing his ankle. That's a huge blow to this offense. Now third down and three. Griffin finds his man and has got a first down with Moss. A gain of 10. And the Vets, Santana Moss, in his 12th year, has a first down. Yeah, Santana Moss, he's been working that slot position, you know, really throughout this season. And 
You know, Mike Shanahan had a talk with him at the start of the year. He needed to lose some weight. Wasn't making some of the plays a year ago that they felt he should have made. And he's had an outstanding season and it's been a great compliment to these other receivers throughout the year. Now it's Morgan and Hankerson on the outside on first down. Griffin comes underneath and trying to hit his fullback Young. Pass too low. Griffin has almost that sleight of hand kind of magician's mentality where he makes the defense play where's the football. And as he told you on Friday, once he does give it up, he raises his arms to let the defense know he doesn't have it so he doesn't get pasted. Now this one here, you see the follow through with that right hand. It looks like he might have gotten his thumb on a helmet. Garcon back in the lineup, and there was movement up front. And it's going to be against Seattle. Neutral zone in front. The 69 yard Colton, still second down. For the first time starting in the wild card round, it's an all star crew, and it's led by Pete Morelli, who is the referee. And so it's an interesting formula they have in the NFL guys work all year long with one crew then they get into the big game and they're working a playing field with all these guys running around with people they're not used to working with that yeah, seems a bit counterintuitive doesn't it? it does second down and five after the offside there is that sleight of hand and Griffin has got a first down ball comes out picked up by young but they marked him down with a gain of seven it's a little bit like what we saw last week. You know, I mean, clearly, Robert Griffin does not have the burst that we're accustomed to seeing from him, but yet he's having some success still running the football. I mean, even here, now he's got a lead blocker, but he's still running away from people. Saw that fumble at the end of the play. He did fumble it 12 times this season, but lost only two. He hands it off this time to Morris running left. He's been running right with more success, and Morris gets four. Brought down by Bobby Wagner. As Griffin on that previous play is Hill knocked it out. He was able to corral it and was down with the football. So no fumble and this Redskins team only turned it over 14 times a franchise record. Yeah, really both these teams did a great job protecting the football especially considering that they both have rookie quarterbacks. Second and six. Morris spins his way to the 15. Third down and one coming up. This offensive line is really just beating up this defensive front. And you don't see that very often against this Seattle defense. It's a big, physical, active group. But the Washington Redskins are taking it to them. And Alfred Morris, who last week had a season-high 33 carries, you wonder how is he going to bounce back from that. And you know he's young. He said, hey, I feel fine. I'm not any sore this week than I've been at any other time during the season. And he comes right out of the gates in this one running well. Third down and one. Griffin keeps it, finds his tight end, Paulson. And Logan Paulson's got a first down. Inside the five, a gain of 11. You see the look of concern on Pete Carroll's face, and a great finish by Logan Paulson. And he's protecting the football as well, Joe. And as good as these offenses have been protecting the ball, the defenses have been just as opportunistic taking it away as a real point of emphasis throughout this week. And I said it before, you get into these playoff games, it's who protects the ball the best that typically goes on and wins. Again, Griffin rolling to his right. Was looking for Hankerson, comes underneath, and the pass incomplete for Garcon. And now Griffin is really slow back to the huddle. Yeah, I, he 
you see the, the limp and you know sometimes having worn a brace sometimes that brace slides and so it creates some problems but it looked to me Joe just by the way that he went to the ground that it's more than just a shifting of the brace that you know, he's clearly in some discomfort. In that pistol formation, handoff is to Morris. On second and goal, no game, Cam Chancellor, the first guy there. Well, Griffin sprained his knee in the game week 14 against the Ravens. He came back into the game after coming out initially, played four more plays, and Kirk Cousins, a fellow rookie, got him into the end zone. They won that game in overtime, and Cousins made a start at Cleveland the next week. Won that game as they're on a seven game winning streak. And that sideline's got to be awfully concerned with what they're seeing body language wise out of Griffin. Quick set up and throw. Touchdown, Paulson. And a flag at the end of it for a hit on Griffin. At the end of this play, you see the the hit there, and but Logan Paulson, who's lined up at the tight end position, he comes off the ball, and Cam Chancellor, looking into the backfield, just turns him loose. After the touchdown, personal foul, number 47, number 47 on the defense, unnecessary roughness, hitting the quarterback. The touchdown is good. Fell to be enforced on the kickoff. It's Bruce Irvin who hit him. They said 47. But the concern now is how healthy is that knee. Well, if the Seattle defense doesn't start playing it a little bit better, he's not going to have to do much anyway. I mean, with Alfred Morris and the way that he's been able to throw the ball. Griffin with two touchdown passes, both on third down. One to Royster. This one to Logan Paulson, and Russell Wilson's got to get to work. What an impressive start for the Redskins offensively, and Logan Paulson, who had only one touchdown reception all year, is into the end zone. Both touchdown passes on third down. Third and goal, and it's 14 to nothing. Redskins on top, and the Seahawks will start at the 20. Mike Shanahan, head coach, talking to RG3, who exited the field moments ago. Seahawks have it down 14. Pete Carroll in that Seahawks sideline trying to figure out some way to slow down this train. The Redskins up 14 to nothing, and they're going to try and run it with Marshawn Lynch, just their fourth play from scrimmage. Three passes, now a run, and Lynch gets four. Joe, I think Pete Carroll's absolutely stunned by what's happened here in this first quarter. I don't think he anticipated for a moment that the Redskins would be able to come in with Alfred Morris and run the ball as effectively in this game as they did last week against Dallas. Second down and six. Wilson goes down. And it was Riley off the edge. Well, good coverage across the board, and you see that Riley comes off the edge. They try to come off it with R Russell Okun, the left tackle, but he's late getting there. And here you've got Russell Wilson believing he's going to be protected, but the coverage down the field was outstanding by the Redskins. Sacked twice, now third and 12. Pass is a little bit underthrown, and what an effort by Zach Miller. 
spinning his way to the marker and it's a first down for the Seahawks a big play when they needed it what well, sure was I mean they needed to get something going offensively and just an outstanding catch by Zach Miller and then even after making the catch being able to pick up that first down Russell Wilson once again under pressure with just a four man rush Here's Lynch right side. Nothing. Kedrick Golston underneath to make that play. And that'll be it for quarter number one. Start could not have been any better for the Washington Redskins. They had it twice, they scored twice. They look good defensively. Seattle needs something to happen as we head into quarter number two back after this from your local Fox station. The stats are a little lopsided as the Redskins dominated that opening quarter and the Seahawks on a second and nine to start the second quarter, try and get some momentum, something rolling. No handoff as Wilson keeps it and Russell's out to midfield. So showing a little bit of what a healthy RG3 can do is they have that read option and Russell Wilson kept it, picked up 19. Well, yeah, and you're going to see Russell Wilson. It looks like he's reading it and, and really kind of misreads it because Perry Riley, he scrapes at the linebacker position. He's waiting for Russell Wilson, but he wisely gets right in behind Marshawn Lynch and there's essentially a lead blocker for him. We're out to midfield. Again, he keeps it looking to throw it. Lynch, who he faked it to. Adia Williams can't bring him down. And a lane on the outside is Lynch is going to pick up about nine as Lorenzo Alexander is out there to make the play. Well, we see some of the, the read option type stuff from Seattle, but it's it's very different from what Washington does offensively. But early in the season, this is not what they were doing. And Pete Carroll saw what Washington was doing with RG3. He liked it. He went to the offensive coordinator Bevel and they implemented some of it. And it's been very successful for them. On second and one, Turbin carries it. And another piece of this very good rookie class for the Seattle Seahawks has two yards and a first down. Fox UFC Saturday returns January 26th for the championship fight as Demetrius Johnson puts his title on the line against John Dodson. Rampage Jackson returns to take on Glover Teixeira. It's not on pay-per-view. It's live. It's free. And it's only on Fox January 26th at 8 Eastern. Wilson good protection that ball comes out for Rice incomplete Griffin was back there with D'Angelo Hall and Cedric Griffin who's back and now they're going to overturn the call and they got it right that's yeah, an excellent job by Sidney Rice in getting his feet in bounds one making the reception but knowing exactly where he was on the field and, and a heck of a throw by Russell Wilson as well and now everything's late because initially they said incomplete one official came down and overruled the other trying to get a quick snap so there's no review turban carries it and gets three but that looked like a good catch in the proper change of the call on the field well this is a nice drive right here by Seattle considering the way this game began to be down 14 points and you know just trying to settle in did you see the catch and the officials get together and for this all-star crew that you talked about, Joe, they do a nice job of getting the call right. Tenth play of this drive, down by 14, second and seven. Wilson well protected. End zone incomplete, nearly picked off by Dowdy. And Doug Baldwin hit Dowdy in the back. Help Russell Wilson avoid 
what could have been a big pick. This Redskins secondary, they've latched on to these receivers and they've been good in protect or in coverage. And you see across the board an almost a huge mistake by Russell Wilson, something that he really has not done. He's trying to get it to Baldwin, but this is where he was initially trying to go with the ball to McGrath, but makes an ill-advised throw at the end of the middle to Baldwin. And Baldwin does an excellent job of breaking that up. Now third down. It's going to be made a little tougher after a delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty, fifth third down. That was close, but it looked like a good call and something that the league has called much tighter here in 2012 than in the last few years. Well, on that last play, Joe, defensive coordinator Jim Haslett, he was bringing an all out blitz with no help on any receivers. We'll see what he does here now that it's third and long. Each side has used a timeout. So we'll use one. Take a break, come back. Third down and 12 when we return. Today's game is sponsored by T-Mobile, nationwide 4G coverage from coast to coast. By DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. And by Subway Restaurants, power up with a surprisingly low-fat turkey melt today. Third down and 12 for the Seahawks, down by 14. Back of the end zone and thrown away. Incomplete, it's fourth down, and the Seahawks will attempt a field goal. Sidney Rice, the closest one to it. Yeah, once they got to third and long, Joe, it was going to be awfully difficult knowing that you essentially had to score a touchdown. Could have picked up a first down. But the Redskins, i tell you, Jim Haslett coming into this game, what they have done defensively over the second half of this season has, has really been good. The yards that they've given up throughout the year really do not tell the story about this defense. Hauschka from 32. Seahawks have their first points of the day. 14-3. All eyes will shift back to RG3 as the Redskins will take it up by 11. A look at first two of the greats. Play quarterback the history of this organization slinging Sammy Baugh from 37 to 52 Sonny Jurgensen mid 60s to the mid 70s we're leaving out some of our favorites like our friend Joe Theismann who we typically see every time we do a game here and then RG3 who is a rookie this year and there's our good friend Mr. Jurgensen who holds court outside this booth watching games chewing on a cigar Every time we visit Lando, here is Niles Paul on a couple of pops. A decent return out across the 20, and we'll go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, there was naturally a flurry of activity down here when Griffin limped off the field. He was taken to a small room behind the bench by team trainer Larry Hess. Then Dr. James Andrews, the noted Dr. Andrews, he slipped back there but quickly exited. The Redskins say there is no injury information to report. But it would be ignoring a story that broke today if we didn't talk about an article that came out in USA Today regarding RG3 and his injury on December 9th when he was hit that leg was exposed and he sprained the knee in a game here against the Baltimore Ravens Griffin keeps it and has it knocked out of his hand penalty flag is down on the play it's recovered by Chester knocked out by Clemens there's a flag downfield So they'll try and sort that out as Chris Clemens, who was with the Redskins. Illegal contact, number 39 defense. Five-yard penalty automatic, first down. Well, here, here it is on the outside with Brandon Browner, and 
That's where they got the flag is when he got fooled. And you know, here's the strip on the back end with Chris Clemens. But Brandon Browner, as I said, he's been out a month. And Mike Shanahan is well aware of that. Now, he's susceptible to some double moves. We've already seen Garcon get one completion on him because he is such a big physical corner. And they're testing him out to see if, in fact, he is a little rusty. And so far, he has shown that he is. So it's an automatic first down. It's Alfred Morris. And he is just a low carrying it out to the 35 so the story breaks today and there's some discrepancy as to who actually cleared RG3 on December 9th to come back into the ball game and return for four plays before Griffin checked out of the game Mike Shanahan his head coach said he let Griffin return with the blessing of Dr. James Andrews meanwhile Andrews said he never cleared Griffin to go back into the game because he never even examined him and then later in the article says I'm the one that shut him down that day finally and that he's been a nervous wreck letting him come back as quick as he has as Morris carries it over the right side Wagner in on the stop with Red Bryant to gain of one well Joe I mean we don't know exactly what transpired there on that sidelines at the time of the injury but I have a hard time believing that head coach Mike Shanahan would put the franchise at risk unnecessarily third down and two and here is what the Seahawks do best is Pierre Garcon and Brandon Browner get into it. Well even right there you I mean you can see the size of Brandon Browner. I mean, this guy is 6'4 and 220 pounds and he's a physical player. Third down and two. Griffin throws late and low for Logan Paulson. And it's fourth down. That was a good stop then by Seattle, even though offensively they were disappointed with a nice drive, having to settle for a field goal. The defense had shown no ability to be able to stop this Redskins offense. So a good stop for them and forcing a punt. Punt from Sam Rocca with Leon Washington waiting for him. Under 10 to play in the first half. Fair catch hauled in by Washington. Out across his own 25. 38 yard punt. Seahawks will have it. Down 11. Today's game is sponsored by Cadillac, the standard of the world. About 125 miles south from here in Richmond, Virginia, is Collegiate Prep School, where Russell Wilson attended, a standout player on both the football field. And the baseball field was drafted by the Rockies in the fourth round of the 2010 draft. Played 61 games in A ball, was invited to big league camp, but he knew when he wanted to put that baseball career on hold to go play one more year at Wisconsin. But this was his first love. And the Seahawks are glad he did and glad they got him. As Marshawn Lynch. Trying to break loose is out to the 35 again of eight. Well, you look at this game up to this point, Joe, and Seattle has not really been able to get the running game going. It's the best run so far with Marshawn Lynch. And as we know, Seattle, both these teams really, they run the ball more than anybody else in, in all of football. And everything that they do is based on their ability to get Marshawn Lynch going and get that defense to honor that and then try to get some big plays down the field in the passing game. Second down and two Lynch again. Out to the 40 and a first down for Seattle brought down by Kerrigan. Now this offense throughout the year has has run the ball well but you look at what they've done over the last five games. It really is remarkable averaging over 210 yards a game rushing during that time and Daryl Bevel the offensive coordinator has really done a nice job taking advantage of the skills that they have of running the football and then also the things that Russell Wilson does so well. Penalty flags fly. Wilson is going to duck out of bounds after avoiding a sack. A 
Padilla Williams with pressure again of four will check the flag. And Pete Morelli getting it straight. Offside. Number 50, defense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. They get Rob Jackson, who had one of the three interceptions week 17 against the Cowboys to win the division. Yeah, Rob Jackson, he was he was the one who was called, and you're right. I mean, he's playing the position of Brian Arakpo, who's essentially missed the entire season, and he's been a real playmaker here over the second half of the year. So first down and five. Ball pops up. Loose and picked up by Lynch. And Marshawn Lynch is going to be out of bounds just outside the 35 and what a break as number 24 was there to pick up the loose ball. Well, it sure is. Marshawn Lynch, he, he's being, you know, they're faking it to him here. And as he tries to pull it out, Russell Wilson, that's when the ball comes loose. But Marshawn Lynch, even after going through the line of scrimmage, he's able to keep the play alive and recover that fumble and turn it into a nice game. A gain of 18. First down at the 36, Turbin. The rookie gets one. And you've got Turbin, a rookie, Russell Wilson, their rookie quarterback, a rookie starting at right guard, and then defensively, their middle linebacker, Bobby Wagner, who set a rookie record for tackles, and Bruce Irvin, who had eight sacks. I mean, this is not just a great rookie class for now, but this should propel this Seattle team to be good for years to come. Yeah, Pete Carroll said if they have the run that they expect to have in future years, it will be because of this rookie class. Wilson finds his man, and the catch made by Robinson, the fullback. A nice play on second down and nine. Dowdy on the stop and a 19-yard catch and run. Washington on the back end is doing such a good job in coverage. And Russell Wilson with pressure, he's able to get outside the pocket, but then they turn Michael Robinson loose. And he wisely comes underneath. But the Redskins have been very good at covering the receivers down the field and not really giving Russell Wilson a lot of good looks. Wilson keeps it. Gets a block from Tate and sets up first and goal at the five. A gain of 12 by Russell Wilson. Well, this is the Seattle version of how they run the read option, and they're going to be keen on Ryan Kerrigan right out here. And that's who Russell Wilson is looking at. And if he collapses as he did, you pull it out, and you've got yourself a nice run on the edge with no contain. Popped by Medeu Williams, but a first and goal at the five. Lynch, nothing. And off the edge, the play was made by Doughty. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, you've got a situation down here with the Seahawks kickers. Steven Hauschka was getting taped up during that drive. His left ankle, now he does kick with his right. He came over here trying to warm up, and he ripped off the tape. Hunter John Ryan's been practicing. House is warming up again. We'll see who goes out there if needed. It's second and goal. Wilson, Robinson, wide open for the touchdown. <laughs> Two touchdown catches during the regular season for Robinson, and that was a big one from Russell Wilson. Just a busted coverage by the Washington Redskins. You're going to see Reed Dowdy, who made the play on the previous down. He again comes on the blitz, but they turn Michael Robinson loose. Josh Wilson on the outside. He goes with the tight end. Nobody comes off of that and covers Robinson in an easy touchdown. And the answer to Aaron Andrews' question is Hauschka will come on to attempt the extra point.
footing is awful on this field, and a reason why these guys are slipping. And Hauschka just able to knock it through, tiptoeing up to the football. A break on that fumble. Lynch picked it up, picked up 18. And later, Michael Robinson, the fullback, into the end zone. Carroll's fired up. So are the Seahawks now down four. Place kicker for the Seahawks, Stephen Hauschka is still out there on the field. He was getting taped up, as we heard from Aaron Andrews earlier. Twisted his left ankle, and so John Ryan, the punter, will kick off for the third time in his NFL career. It stays in bounds, and it's returned by Niles Paul out across the 25. And so while the offense for the Redskins goes back on the field in RG3, we're now seeing what Seattle can do and the pressure and stress that Russell Wilson can put on a defense. Yeah, I think you look at Seattle coming into this game. I mean, they're a young football team, and they found themselves down 14 points and really scrambling. I think it caught everybody by surprise what Washington was able to do there in that, you know, the first couple of possessions. But they've settled in in the last two offensive drives. It's really been huge for the Seattle team to come away with 10 points. Toss to Morris running right. And Alfred out near the 29 brought down by Wagner. Hauschka is going to walk off the field. And we talk a lot about RG3, and rightfully so, but you know, you kind of wonder where this team would be also if they didn't have Alfred Morris. And you talked about the rookie players that Seattle has and their contributions. I mean, these two guys, both NFL Rookie of the Year candidates, sixth round pick, it's really been remarkable. Mike Shanahan's had that golden touch with running backs. Aired out. Garcon and picked off. Intercepted by Earl Thomas. Morgan on the tackle, but the first takeaway for this Seattle defense, and it's Earl Thomas. The Pro Bowl safety is that ball was up for grabs and fluttered out of the hand of RG3. Earl Thomas known as a great deep ball hawk and he went back there and took it away for the interception. Well, Earl Thomas is going back to the Pro Bowl for a reason. And you see, I mean, he reads this the entire way. There's nobody on the other side of the field to hold him. And a ball that was thrown late, that was easy for Earl Thomas to get over the top and make a play on that. RG3, who held it just a tick longer and you need to get that ball out towards the sideline thrown too far to the inside unable to hold Thomas in the middle and a relatively easy play for the Pro Bowl safety right back on offense down by four Wilson keeps it slings it over the middle's got rice and that's going to be incomplete had it for a moment lost it Incomplete from Russell Wilson. That's one of the few times uh, in this first half that there was actually some separation in a place for Wilson to go with the football. A ball that's high, but Sidney Rice, he makes those catches and he's, he's trying to come in down with it. He's unable to haul it in. Total switch from the opening quarter, which was dominated by Washington. Second and ten. Wilson keeps it. Brought down by London Fletcher after a gain of five. We talked a little bit earlier about see some more pushing and shoving. And D'Angelo Hall, you know, he's been a good cover corner throughout his career, takes a lot of chances. One of the things that I've been impressed with over with him over the years is his ability to put his head in there and make a tackle. But he won't back down from a scuffle either. Not afraid to start one either. <laughs> Third down and five. Redskins showing blitz. They come. Wilson completes for the first down. He got Baldwin. 
and just able to get it away as that blitz was right in his face. Yeah, Doug Baldwin does a nice job of just getting off the ball, getting to where the first down is, turning around and picking up the first down. And Doug Baldwin, an undrafted free agent a year ago, led the team in receptions. He's had to battle through some injuries this year, but he's making more contribution to this team here in recent weeks. Josh Wilson got there a step too late. First down, Seattle. Good protection, wide open, left alone, over the middle. There he is again. Baldwin makes a move and slides down at the 30. And we are at the two-minute warning. And this 33-yard completion from Russell Wilson to Doug Baldwin sets up Seattle down by four. Comparison of the two quarterbacks. Griffin has the only interception, but two touchdowns. But after a 14 to nothing lead, Seattle's put up 10, and they have a first down at the 30. Two minutes left, two timeouts. So they can run it, and they do with Lynch. And Marshawn Lynch carries a couple of tacklers for five. Well, it's generally what happens. You come out and you're a running team and the defense is cranked up and hard to get those yards and then things start to loosen up a little bit. We're starting to see that a little bit more and they're having a little more success throwing the football as well. We saw the big play to Doug Baldwin right before the two minute warning. They just completely turned him loose in the middle of the field. Second down and five. Lynch takes it and spins down inside the 20. He's got another Seattle first down. Marshawn Lynch was traded to Seattle four games into the 2010 season. According to Pete Carroll, it was the persistence of general manager John Schneider that got him because Buffalo said no five times before they finally said yes. Tell you, Pete Carroll and John Schneider, they've made a pretty good team here over the last three years and how they've built this roster. From the 19, Wilson keeps it. Fires it for his tight end, and it's dropped by Anthony McCoy. And that big body had some room to run, and a full head of steam didn't make the catch. Well, he did, and Russell Wilson had some room to run as well. I thought that's what he was going to do, but McCoy flashes out in front of him, so he gives him an easy ball. They just unable to catch it, but had Russell Wilson had tucked it, he had a whole lot of open field also because on the outside they were in man coverage. Second and ten. Lynch making the most of it. Fletcher wraps him up. And a timeout taken by Seattle after a gain of three. Here's Kurt to tell us what's coming up at halftime. All right, thanks, Joe. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will break down this wild card matchup. And our own Jamie Maggio talks with Ray Lewis as the Ravens win in his last home game. We'll see you on the Visa Halftime Show. Joe, Troy. I couldn't read the sign. From, I couldn't either. From Howie, I tried. Saw so Terry there weighing his food. That's what he does at halftime. He weighs his food, even ice cream sandwiches. Oh, Howie changed his pick. He didn't pick Washington. He said, I really meant to pick Washington. Well, Seattle, after, as I said, getting off to a tough start, they, they have really settled in, and they're starting to resemble a little bit more of the team that we saw throughout that regular season. Third and seven. Just got it away. Wilson fires. He's got Golden Tate. And Tate is short of the first down. So now the question is, how healthy is Hauschka? Is he healthy enough to try a short field goal? 
They're going to let the clock wind down, spend their final time out. It'll be fourth down and two, and a 29 yard field goal try for Hauschka or John Ryan, who, by the way, has never attempted a field goal. In the NFL he kicked off moments ago for just the third time in his NFL career. But he's also the holder so. There's plenty of drama here for a 29 yard field goal to make it a one point game. Well plenty of drama here and then plenty of drama as we move in and through the second half as. You know it hasn't been the case in the other wild card games but. Oftentimes these playoff games. Come down to a kick and. Wonder exactly what his range may be. We saw him on the extra point, just basically take one step and boot it through. It's his plant leg and the bad left ankle that he twisted earlier. Got it. And it's a one point game at the half. The Redskins put up the game's first 14 points, all coming in the first quarter. The Seahawks have answered with 13 of their own, all in the second quarter. And Pete Carroll's crew on the road. They've closed it to a one-point game. Visa halftime coming up after this from your local Fox station. Two quick touchdown passes from RG3 before he uh, started limping around with that knee injury. Put the Redskins up 14-0. But the Seahawks have come back with 13 unanswered. It is a good game here as we wrap up the wild card weekend. Kurt Menefee along with Terry Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. And let's break down the first half so far here, starting with you, Howie. Yeah, I'll tell you, Red Bryant playing a defensive end at 330 pounds, really geared to stop the inside and gets the edge. Big pickup. Once again, they seal him inside with the tight end. They get the edge once again. Now they bring in Bruce Irvin. Get more speed at the defensive end position. How do you play the read option? You take the dive, you take the quarterback. Bruce Irvin tries to take both. An unenviable position. Obviously, Seattle's gotten it in more gear, particularly since their offense had sustained drive. That helped their defense. Howie, and in the opening drive, RG3 ran the dive option, setting up the very next play. They ended up start the dive option, play action. There's absolutely no pass rush on RG3. Pierre Garçon runs the sideline stop route, and RG3's got all day long to throw the football. The problem is now, Seattle's been respecting RG3 on the dive option. He can't run right now, so they should be bringing their outside pass rush. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that would be the normal thing to do, Jimmy, but with him being hurt, like he has been in the red zone earlier, they, they couldn't run man because of his ability to run the ball, as you see here, with he had, their hands hesitating. The rest is waiting to see what he can do, make sure he doesn't get out of the pocket. But now that he's injured, you can run man. He's done more pocket passing than we've seen him do basically all season in the last quarter. You have to rush RG3. His run is not a threat anymore, and that's a big advantage for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, Seattle's got to score. You get those opportunities on the road, you got to score touchdowns. Nice comeback, though. Yeah, they yeah. have scored 13 yeah. unanswered to make this a ball game. We talked about it being a good one. It has been so far 14-13. Washington with the lead here at halftime. When we come back, the AFC wildcard game today, Ray Lewis's final home game as a Raven. We'll talk with him on the other side as we continue with the Visa Halftime. A good one on this wild card weekend is the Redskins lead by one as we start the second half back to the interception. Yeah you go back and you take a look at Earl Thomas on the interception and the ground that he's oh. able to cover. One of the reasons yeah. is because Josh Morgan was on a crossing route really somewhat of a misread there by RG3 but the question really is Joe how is the knee affecting RG3's ability to throw the football. You can see he pushes off with the right foot or the right leg but he doesn't follow all the way through with it. Now last week he struggled against the Cowboys throwing the ball. How much of a factor was the knee? He says it wasn't. But that certainly is left as a question as we move into the second half. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. So we watched 
Griffin warm up before the start of the second half and his backup fellow rookie Kirk Cousins was warming up and had some urgency to his throws. Kick off by Forbath is picked up by Washington always a threat. And Washington is out across the 30 for a report down from the field. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Well, Joe, you and Troy mentioned at the beginning of the game, Pete Carroll told us yesterday they planned on just going after RG3. I asked Coach Carroll coming out of the half, does that change now that we see RG3 struggling out there with the knee? He said, let's keep getting after him. He also feels like they've really matched Washington's speed. And we just saw Stephen Houskin tried to uh, kick off here, and he did make a 45-yard kick. He still is limping, though, on that left leg, guys. Yeah, noticeably. Not moving around well at all, but two for two. Good. The field goal department today. Three and 80. Three and 80. Good. Start of the second half. Starts with a run by Lynch. Tried the left side. Now comes back to the right side. He's got Russell Wilson out in front of him, blocking. And Wilson allowing a little more room for Marshawn Lynch, who carried it for 26 yards. Well, first of all, it's a great job by Marshawn Lynch being able to traverse field here and get on the corner. But look at Russell Wilson and the job that he does. Now, last week in that game against the Rams, I mean, he led the way very similar to that play right there and knocked the guy right on his back. I mean, he's, what can you say? The guy's done it all. 5-11-206. Green 80. Green 80. Turbin in the backfield. Wilson finds Turbin. And he's inside the 40 in for a report from the other side, the Redskins side. Here's Pam. Well, Joe, some concerned faces as the Redskins headed into the locker room. Mike Janahan, he told me as they came out that he felt like the defense especially lost its composure. He said we also have to get off the field on defense. Back to you. Well, the defense has been playing much better, obviously, during this seven-game winning streak that the Redskins bring in after a rough start the first nine games of the year. They started out the game well, but in the second quarter, Give up a lot of yards as Turbin carries. Knocked down right at the marker. Depends on the spot. Perry Riley on the tackle. Well, when this game started, Joe, defensively, they've done a pretty nice job. You know, they're able to slow down Seattle, of course, offensively, which has really been the case throughout the year. Their ability to control the clock and then get points has helped out this defense. But the way that Seattle has come off of the start of this game and moved the ball to score before the half, and now to start this half, moving the ball's got to be real concerning to Mike Shanahan. It's third down and one. Lynch is on the sideline. Limped off a moment ago after that carry to set up this opportunity. It's the up back Robinson, and he's got a first down. And Lynch will check back into the game. Last three possessions. Much better for the Seahawks, who started three and out the first two times they had it. Yeah, they just settled in, and I, you know, even as relaxed as Russell Wilson was and as confident as he was coming into this game, it's only natural when you experience what this environment is like, playoff atmosphere, but he has settled in here. Wilson keeps it to the sideline. Dangerous throw, and it's Golden Tate for the first down just inside the 17. Yeah, you're right, Joe. It was a dangerous throw. He's on the opposite hash mark, and he's throwing that all the way across the field. And if he doesn't get that out on the sideline and away from the defender, there's a chance that thing's going to be intercepted by Josh Wilson. But great job by Golden Tate of hauling that in. Fourth red zone possession for the Seahawks. Number 10 in the red zone during the regular season. Little trouble with a snap, no trouble with a handoff, and Lynch is down to the two. Russell Wilson barely got it to Marshawn Lynch. It was good for 15 yards. 
it there. He's able to get it just in time. Whether or not that was a read, hard to know. But Rob Jackson, he comes up the field, so it was good that it was handed off to Marshawn Lynch. Russell Okun, the left tackle with a big block. Here's Lynch, right side, cuts up field. Down to the one. Second down and goal as London Fletcher came up to make the stop. And the story is old, but no less impressive with Fletcher. 241st consecutive game. A guy who's never missed a game since he went to St. Louis out of tiny John Carroll. Uh, London Fletcher, he's been playing so long, I played against him <laughs> back in 1998. Second and goal. Here's Lynch. Ball comes out. Washington has it. Well, that's what this Redskins team has been about all season long, is being able to create takeaways when they've had to, and they needed one at that moment. London Fletcher in on it. Fumble by Lynch. Redskins have it up one. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. By Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Pretty remarkable that the Seahawks, who were led by a rookie quarterback, did not turn it over in 54 red zone possessions during the regular season. They do here. Their fourth time in the red zone. Recovered by Jarvis Jenkins. And the handoff is to Young. Let's go back to the fumble. Yeah, Barry Cofield, he gets pressure right in the interior part of this line. And you see the helmet on the ball comes loose. Jarvis Jenkins is the one who's able to recover it. Now, Marshawn Lynch fumbled the ball five times during the regular season. He had only lost two of those. But he has been a guy who's put the ball on the ground. Now, you get a helmet on the ball like that, that's hard to hang on to. So now second down and seven. This is our first look at RG3 after the break. Looked like a busted play as Garcella makes the catch and then runs into the big body of Allen Branch. Looked like there was a miscommunication in the backfield of that play, Joe. It's about the second time I, I've seen it that RG3 comes out, he goes to his left, the backs, everybody else went the other way. Well, the play didn't have much of a chance right from the start. Right now, with it being third and five, the Redskins, they just want to pick up this first down. And try to recapture some field position. That special teams coordinator Danny Smith talking to Mike Shanahan. Then back inside their own ten, third down and five. Here's Moss, first down. Santana Moss with a big catch on third down and five. And a first down for Washington, so a little breathing room. Well, one of the things that Washington has done is you see the splits and how they stack the receivers. And as we know, Seattle likes to get physical with these receivers, and that kind of allows them to get a better release off the line. One of the Seahawks is down. That's Chris Clemens. A look at him. We'll take a break. Looked like the left knee of Chris Clemens just gave out, able to get up and walk off the field. Bruce Irvin and led all NFL rookies with his eight sacks. First round pick out of West Virginia in the lineup and a toss to Morris running left. Alfred Morris picks up five. Knocked down by Mebane. Yeah, that offensive line just gets that defense moving, and Alfred Morris, he finds himself a little lane and he said one of the things that he had to learn in the NFL was that you don't have a lot of time to make many moves, you know, because of the speed of the game. He said it's a good thing for him because he didn't have many moves to begin with. This Redskins line has held up really well, even with Josh Loribas, the rookie, in at left guard for Lichtensteiger. Second down and five. Now Morris cuts up field and has a first down. 
Troy, I know you believe this is a quarterback's league, and it certainly is. But when you have a running game that you can rely on to pick up yards at this time of year with the lead, second half, there's nothing like it in this game. Well, I benefited from a guy that could run the football pretty well in Emmett Smith, so I, I know what you're talking about. And you know, they've been able to do it a lot of different ways, and Robert Griffin certainly is a big part why, why this offense leads the league in rushing. But I think what Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan have done, marrying the old system that he has with this new one, has been tremendous. Here's a pass from Morgan and a good play by Browner. Got around a block of Logan Paulson, who was out there in a three receiver set wide to the left and no gain on first down you know there's Kyle Shanahan there and he's the one who's calling the plays and so he brings this zone blocking scheme and the running game that we saw run so effectively in Denver with Mike Shanahan and then you include the read option and the things that Robert Griffin did there in college at Baylor and it's been really something to watch toss to Morris running right and a good play made by Branch he drove Chris Chester right into the backfield. And Allen Branch made the play, loss of one. He's right in the middle. He works through Chris Chester. Looks like he might have got tripped. Alfred Morris, you see, is, as Branch is trying to get through Chester and the cutback there, and Alfred Morris just wasn't able to avoid the legs. But a good play nonetheless. And Garcon left the field. As he and Browner got into it, they got a reaction from the crowd, and then Garcon had to go to the sideline. Third down and 11. Over the middle, that is tipped by Sherman. And it was behind Morgan. It looked like the pass was intended for Morgan. And that throw got away from RG3. Yeah, it sure did, because Josh Morgan was wide open across the field. And a throw that well, you know just wasn't even close but that should have been an easy completion and then they pick up the first down instead it's a punt from Sav Rocca Leon Washington from inside the 25 that play was made by Niles Paul six yards on the return and the two teams start to push and shove yet again we're at a timeout. Seahawks will have it. Down by one. That's us. Pleasant night in Landover, Maryland. This Redskins defense has allowed only 20 points per game during their seven-game winning streak. 13 so far in this wild card playoff game. Seahawks down by one. Wilson. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Finds Golden Tate on the sideline. And the former Notre Dame star is good for eight. When every play matters, turn to NFL Mobile for coverage of every NFL game. Call Star Star NFL to get it for just $5 all month long. Second and two. Wilson again has to scramble to his left. Dowdy's the one that made that play. Wilson tried to get back to the line of scrimmage, lost one, third and short coming up. You know, second and two, it's a pretty good down to try to take a shot, you know, and see if you can run play action. It's exactly what Seattle decides to do, but once again, Washington, they cover it up pretty good. They're on the back end of it, and Russell Wilson loses yardage, and that one is really inexcusable. You just got to get the ball out of your hands. Blitz. Third down and three incomplete. But a flag is down. And it's against Washington for an automatic first down. Uh, Josh Wilson here, number 26. He holds Sidney Rice as he's trying to come out of the route. 
Russell Wilson, because of the pressure, not able to hang on to the ball. They've got to get it out. Josh Wilson knows it, but he grabs him and gets called. It's only the second Washington penalty of the game. They called it on Hall. Wilson was guilty of it as well. And Jim Hazadu blitzed 48 times against the Cowboys in Week 17. Brought a blitz, but the penalty gives the Seahawks a first down. At their own 41, Wilson keeps it again. Right up the middle. Russell Wilson into Redskins territory. And down inside the 30. We saw Chris Wilson trying to calm D'Angelo Hall down. I think D'Angelo Hall is anticipating a little bit of help, but Sidney Rice runs right by him Russell Wilson just does not see it but you see how much room he did see in the middle of the field he takes it and still, still gets a, a huge gain off the play that's a season long 28 yard run by Wilson first down at the 30 Cut. Lynch first carry since his fumble gets one Remember while the Seahawks trail by one and they're theoretically inside field goal range already. They have an injured kicker in Steven Hauschka who's been limping around with a bad left ankle. Well, we, we heard Aaron Andrews report that, you know, there at halftime, Hauschka was making 45-yard field goals, which was really somewhat surprising for me to hear because of just watching him walk off the field there at the half. He was not moving well at all. Second down and nine. That's the end zone and incomplete for Baldwin. Now third down and nine, and you're looking at a field goal drive about 48 yards from here. Boy, Seattle blocks that up nicely, and you see one-on-one -on -one and just a lot of field there. And as we've seen throughout the year, you know, Jim Hazlitt will bring pressure. At times, he'll leave his guys on an island, but Seattle just unable to convert. Blitz again. And they get home. They're going to say that Wilson was in the grasp and eliminate the catch by Turbin. Josh Wilson was there to bring down Russell Wilson. Coming on another blitz. This time they bring Josh Wilson inside. See Jordan Pugh, he takes it outside, and then they bring Wilson in the middle. He's the one who's able to get home and get to Russell Wilson. So a nice call by Jim Hazlitt with, once again, their pressure package and forcing Seattle to punt the football. A loss of nine on that big sack by Wilson, who had one during the regular season. And that drives the Seahawks clearly out of field goal range. Delay of game now. Delay of game. Offense. You know, last week, Joe, Jim Hazlitt brought more pressure than he had brought throughout the entire year against the Dallas Cowboys. He challenged those defensive back, in particular, D'Angelo Hall on Des Bryant, and he's challenged them again here in this game. And for the most part, they have done a beautiful job. Crawford waits for it. Redskins declined the delay of game penalty. See how good Ryan is at downing. Near the Redskins end zone. That came really close to hitting a Redskins player, and they're going to throw a flag at the end of the play. Almost hit Crawford, but he wasn't alone. <laughs> During the kick, holding number 53 of the receiving team, half the distance to the goal. First down, timeout. They get Brian Keel for a hold. So the Redskins are backed up. Awfully close to touching Griffin. It missed him. Skins have it up one. A 
drive for the Seahawks stalls. The punt and the penalty marks it just outside the five. And the Redskins offense, which couldn't be stopped the first two times it had it, has been almost entirely stopped by this good Seahawks defense, which ended the season ranked fourth in the NFL. First in points against. And Robert Griffin, the third, is going to be swallowed up back at the two. Allen Branch is there for Seattle, a loss of four. We mentioned earlier in this defensive front how big they are. And really, they've just got the speed rushers, Chris Clements, who we saw go down, and then Bruce Irvin. But for such big guys, they're pretty athletic. athletic, And they're able to move the pocket a little bit, and they're able to then to get to RG3. And you know, really, outside of a, a big game down the field earlier to Pierre Garçon, they've just not really been able to get anything in the passing game. So sacked for the first time at second and 14. Fake the handoff, and Griffin comes to the sideline. There was Trufant underneath it. Pass intended for Morgan incomplete. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, Joe, Troy was just talking about that big defensive front for Seattle. They will be without Chris Clemens. He is doubtful to return. We saw him getting test done in that left knee, and then he went back into the locker room. Looked like it just gave out on him, so the guy who had 11 and a half sacks during the regular season looks like is lost for the rest of the day and it's third and 14. Well anything the Redskins can do here just to give their punter some room to work would be good. Over the middle it's Garcon. He's out to the 10 that's it. And good work by the Seattle defense. As we are under half a minute to play in the third quarter. Well, the last two offensive possessions for Washington have started inside the five-yard line. The last one, at least the Redskins were able to move the ball and, and reestablish some field position, but this time Seattle defensively forces the three and out. Rocket gets rid of it and hits a booming punt. Good punt by Rocket. It's our G3 has thrown in this game for just 84 yards. That was a 53-yard punt by Sam Rocco. Seahawks have it yet again. Four seconds left in the quarter as they trail by one. Four seconds left, third quarter. First down, Seattle. Down by one. It's Lynch to the 40. And that'll do it for quarter number three. One point separating the Redskins and the Seahawks. Off to the fourth we go here in Maryland. Little different looking Pete Carroll than the first two times the Redskins had it. Seahawks have been able to move the football the last five times they've possessed it, but have had only one touchdown. Had a fumble deep in Redskins territory. Now Wilson picks his way through the defense and spins out to the 45. A gain of five, third down coming up. Yeah, I think the point that you make, Joe, is, is very good that you know the Seattle Seahawks have been able to move the ball offensively, but they haven't been able to capitalize. And that's really kind of been the story for the Redskins defensively throughout this season. We saw RG3 there on the sidelines, and you know, to this point, he's been a non-factor in this game. Third down and two. Cut. Grenade. Grenade. Cut. They fake the toss. Wilson in trouble. Dowdy brings him down, and they're going to rule it a sack. Reed Dowdy, one of those guys who's had to play a lot this year because of the injuries at the safety position, and a real active guy around the line of scrimmage does an excellent job of chasing Russell Wilson down from the backside. That's the fifth Redskin sack of the game, and Jim Haslett has got to be thrilled with the way his group was playing defensively. And you get the feeling if they're going to win this game, it's going to be on the strength of their defense. 
instead of RG3 taking over. More on him. And somehow Crawford hangs on. Jeremy Lane met the body of Richard Crawford the same time the football did. And I don't know how you hang on to punt dropping out of the sky and make a hit like that. You see Lane on the outside. Hunter comes down and is the one able to put a hit on him. And I'd want no part of returning punts in the National Football League. <laughs> The crowd is chanting RG3, but you just said it. So far, Griffin's been a non-factor and nothing like he was prior to the injury against the Raiders. Had a couple of decent runs early in this game, but 12 yards on the night. And only 84 yards passing. He keeps it here limping all the way. And at some point, don't you have to think about Kirk Cousins coming into this ball game? Because this, first of all, he's vulnerable, Griffin. Secondly, he's, he's not able to do what makes him great, which is run the football or pull it out and throw it downfield. Well, when he strings this one out, he has no ability to really plant and then get going up the field. This is what we saw earlier in the game, that same kind of run. You see some lanes there where he's just trying to get as much as he can, get to the sideline. But, yeah, I mean, Kirk Cousins, he's shown limited playing time. He's been excellent coming off the bench. And his ability to throw the ball, and it's a different style, a lot more bootlegs when he's playing. Here's Morris carrying it for a first down. We'll give you a look at the day for RG3. Early, he hit his throwing hand on a helmet. That's where he injured the knee. Limping since then, he did throw two early touchdowns. Got that extra hit. From Irvin, but he is a compromised player right now who is not able to run and is not the threat that the Redskins relied on all season to win the NFC East. And we see his numbers throwing the football, and we just don't know, you know how much the knees affecting that part of his game. Looks like more confusion back there as Griffin throws high for Morgan. It's interesting though when when we came into this game you know Pete Carroll really wanted RG3 to have to beat them and he wanted to be able to stop Alfred Morris especially Morris coming off of the, the game he had last week and they really been able to do that Alfred Morris is, has been effective running the football in this game and RG3 just has not been able to be the complimentary player to Alfred Morris throughout the evening. Only one completion for Griffin over 11 yards the entire game, and it's Morris on second and 10, getting three. So now third down for Robert Griffin the third, and any decision obviously would be that of that man, Mike Shanahan, two-time Super Bowl champion head coach with the Denver Broncos. And 60-year-old's been revitalized here with the Redskins thanks to Griffin, Morris, and the play of this defense during their seven-game win streak. Well, it sure helps here at third and seven that Chris Clemens is not on the field. Griffin over the middle, pass incomplete for Hankerson. He had him. Hankerson could not make the connection. It's fourth down. See Leonard Hankerson, he's got the square in and, and he's he's open. A ball that's out in front of him, but you know, it wasn't a great throw. Certainly put it on his body a little bit better, but Hankerson, I thought, could have been able to make that play. Redskins now one for their last five on third down after starting four for four. And two touchdowns on third down. Washington avoids a tackle. Takes it out near the 21. 52 yard punt, 11 yard return. Again, Russell Wilson to the field. Down by one. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. By Bud Light Sports Fan app. Download the app today. And by Pizza Hut. Make it great.
Kyle Shanahan, offensive coordinator, talking it over with RG3. Kirk Cousins listening, but it's Russell Wilson from the 21. He's got Tate. Golden Tate makes a spin move. Very good after the catch is Golden Tate, a gain of seven. Right around Dowdy, and there have been a couple of missed opportunities for the Seahawks down by one. The fumble by Lynch at this point is the difference in the game, and then the missed Doug Baldwin. But that said, the Seahawks have been able to move it. They did not score on either of those two drives and those missed opportunities. Down by one, it's Lynch. And Lynch had a huge hole to run through. He's out across the 45. And doing what Marshawn Lynch does in the playoffs, carrying tacklers good for 18. And Max Unger, the center, he does a really good job of sealing that and giving Marshawn Lynch a place to run the football. And you mentioned earlier, Joe, how much a running game really helps a young quarterback. And having a veteran center helps as well, especially a Pro Bowl center. And Max Unger does a nice job of calling out protections and taking a lot of pressure off this young quarterback. Under 10 to go. Wilson keeps it. Nowhere to go. There's Dowdy again. A loss of one. Well, this is the way defensively that you draw it up. Ryan Kerrigan, he's going to take the dive, man, but then you see Reed Dowdy, who he scrapes, and he's there for Russell Wilson. Not easy. Not easy to do for Reed Dowdy. You see all the space that Russell Wilson had and being able to make a tackle against an athletic quarterback that can really run. That's a nice play. Dowdy, 10 tackles, two sacks in this game. Pass is dropped. Zach Miller, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. This was a Seattle offense that threw the ball only 75 times over the first five games. But then they open it up for Russell Wilson. It's in his hands. Faced with third and ten. Blitz again. Seahawks pick it up. Out of the backfield. The catch is made by Miller. And Zach Miller's got a first down inside the 35. Brought to the ground by Alexander, but 22 yards on third and 10. Well, here's Zach Miller. You're going to see the pressure. Medea Williams, he hits it. And now they believe that Zach Miller is going to stay in protection. But when he leaks out, there's nobody there then in coverage. That's a big third down conversion for Seattle. Good job by Turbin to pick up the blitz from Williams. First down. Wilson chased by Riley. Throws it away. Second and ten. This January, Kevin Bacon comes to Fox in a groundbreaking new series. Can one man stop the serial killer and his deadly followers? The following premieres Monday, January 21st, right around the corner here on Fox. Well, now the Seattle Seahawks are getting into that range where you start to say, okay, do they attempt a longer field goal with Hauska, or just what exactly is the thinking over there by Pete Carroll? Off to Lynch. Hit the brakes, reversed field, and takes it down inside the 30. Picked up five. There's Hauschka. Before the game, said his range was 55 yards, even with this bad footing. But who knows how comfortable he feels with a turned left ankle. Maybe two downs to get five yards here. Yeah, the Redskins are hoping they'll find out. Third down and five. It's Lynch. First down. 
Still going. Gets a block from his quarterback and is in for the touchdown. How about the rookie quarterback sprinting downfield to get in front of Marshawn Lynch to help get him into the end zone? Really a great run by Marshawn Lynch as well. You're going to see the move that he makes once he moves through the line of scrimmage. Right there to get to the outside. And then Russell Wilson once again. This guy is not just a spectator. Even with Marshawn Lynch that far down the field, Russell Wilson getting out in front of him doing what he can to help. And now going for two. This will be their first two-point attempt all year. They're looking at the scoring play upstairs to make sure Lynch got in. Let's take a look before we go to break. Looked like he clearly got in, but in a booth review, the call when we come back. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The touchdown. And now to the replays. They're going to see D'Angelo Hall. He comes in to make a play on Marshawn Lynch. Lynch just gives him the leg and takes it away. And as I said, D'Angelo Hall, he's an excellent tackler, but he left some laundry on the field there. Two-point try, first of the year for the Seahawks. Wilson. Zach Miller working on Medeu Williams made the tough catch. It's a seven-point game. The Seahawks on top. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the all-new Ford Fusion. Go further. The Seahawks now have put up 21 unanswered points since the first quarter. And more specifically for the Redskins, they have done virtually nothing offensively since RG3 re-injured that knee. Niles Paul on the return. Out across the 20, knocked down across the 23. So now Robert Griffin III comes out. He has been totally shut down by the Seahawk defense and really isn't himself. This is an RG3 with a bad knee. It's gotten worse within this game. Well, there's no question that it has. I mean, there's a guy who obviously is an explosive player, and they're able to use those things along with, with Alfred Morris, but he's just not been a factor in this game. And, you know, we talked about Kirk Cousins. I don't think for a minute that anyone's thinking about making that move on the sidelines. But he's not been very effective throwing the football either. He keeps it here. As all day and can't get rid of it. Brought down by the rookie Bruce Irvin. Griffin is sacked in a loss of 12. Now you're going to see the play action. And when, when Robert Griffin gets to the outside, We've seen it all year. He would take this right here. You see all that field out in front of him, and then he goes down. So even for a guy who's been able to do so much with his legs, it's changing the way he's thinking about playing the game as well because you would never see a guy make a play on him like that in the open field. Now second and 22. Bad snap. And it belongs to Seattle. And Robert Griffin the third is down on the ground and can't get up. Stunned silence here at FedEx Field is one of the brightest stars to come into this league in a long time Who has not been himself the bulk of the day now can't get up let's take another look 
Well, you're going to see the snap of the ball. It's low, and then as he goes down, but as he's trying to get it here, mm. you see that knee oh. go. And Joe, it kind of goes back to the point that you made earlier as far as the conversation or lack thereof that occurred when the injury happened four weeks ago between him and Dr. between Mike Shanahan and Dr. James Andrews and whether or not RG3 was at risk playing in this game with that injury. The later part of that article we talked about earlier, Dr. Andrews was saying, I'm the one that shut him down that day finally. I've been a nervous wreck letting him come back as quick as he has. He's doing a lot better this week, but he's still recovering, and I'm holding my breath because of it. That's Dr. Andrews right there in the trench coat and the stocking cap. And simply put, he was talking about Robert Griffin III saying that he's a compromised player out there, and he is still in the process of healing while this... Redskins organization for the most part this season has been flung on his back. They tried to get themselves on his back one more time and that right knee finally gave out. Take a break. RG3 saluted the fans as he limped his way off the field and put his arm around his Head coach then exited through that door again. Kirk Cousins is getting loose, but right now it's on the Redskins defense or the Seahawk offense. Is after the turnover on that snap by Will Montgomery, the Seahawks have it first and goal at the five, up by seven. They run it with Lynch. Jackson makes the play on his back, a gain of one. Well, right now, Joe, for this defense of Washington, they're down seven points. And they have got to be able to come up with a stop here. Nothing Jim has it would like more than to see another turnover like they saw earlier by Marshawn Lynch. Seattle up by seven. Big day for Lynch. 130 yards as Wilson fires it right through the hand of his tight end Zach Miller and now it's third and goal had a chance on Zach Miller as well a little better throw may have been able to put it on him he was across the goal line and just the ball that sailed on Russell Wilson big opportunity for the Seahawks already up seven crowd tries to get back into it after watching RG3 limp off the field third and goal is incomplete for Golden Tate. He's looking for a flag and won't get it. It looked like there was some contact there on Golden Tate. Another ball that sails. It's definitely contact. I don't think it was a penalty was warranted, but he got inside leverage. And you see that a, a lower ball, a ball thrown down on the body, that's a pretty easy play to make, but it sails on Wilson. Just a little more than an extra point, Hauschka, to make it a 10-point game from 22 yards out. He is three for three on the day. So now a two-score game, and Mike Shanahan is without his playmaker, Robert Griffin III. We look ahead to next week. And it's the divisional round. The NFC playoffs continue right here on Fox. Beginning Saturday, the Packers taking on the 49ers in San Francisco. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern and then next Sunday. At noon Eastern, it will be the winner of this game in Atlanta to take on the number one seeded Falcons. So now the attention shifts to Kirk Cousins. When you talk about the year that Kyle Shanahan and his father Mike Shanahan have had putting an offense together, I think what makes it even that much more impressive is once the focus shifted away from RG3 for the end of the one game against the Ravens, the start against Cleveland, they went to a different plan, and Cousins 
was so effective against the Browns in a win during this seven game streak. Well it's essentially a, a different playbook. You know I mean they still have the same pass routes and things of that nature but the read option is taken out. You do run more of the boots and he's more of your classic drop back passer more so than than RG three. Five and a half to go each side with all three timeouts and Niles Paul will return it. Almost lost the football and can't make the 20. 22 yard return and here comes Cousins. Yeah, and a guy who, you know, obviously a young player, doesn't get much work during the week, but he's been in this situation before. You say coming off the bench, the game they had to win to even put themselves into the playoffs against Baltimore, and he played exceptionally well. Griffin back out to watch. But the rest of this belongs to Cousins, a fourth round pick out of Michigan State. Pass is caught. That's Hankerson. And the big receiver in his second year out of Miami is good for 15 yards. That's a pretty good start. You know, anytime you come off the bench and you haven't thrown a ball in a while and you want to get that first completion and they're able to get it with Kirk Cousins. Now he's running a no huddle. And again, just something that he doesn't get a lot of reps on during the week. Wide snap. Cousins gets hit. And it's an incomplete pass. Meanwhile, Rex Grossman. Bruce Irvin got the arm of Cousins and ruled it incomplete. Rex Grossman is inactive. So if Cousins were to go down, the Redskins are out of quarterbacks. Second down and 10. As Cousins comes off the bench, what a spot. Two good throws from Cousins to start his night. And Hankerson's being covered by Marcus Trufant. And you, know, you get into this situation against these corners, and Brandon Browner, and we've seen him have a few troubles in this ball game tonight, but then Richard Sherman on the opposite side. And this is a tough group to throw the football against. There are the two corners. Big physical cornerbacks. That's what Pete Carroll likes. Another bad snap. Cousins corrals it. And there'll be a loss on the play. Will Montgomery is struggling at center with these snaps and shotgun. That was the end of the night for RG3. And he's got a big body in front of him, and he's trying to get the ball snapped and make a block in the exact same poor snap that he made to Robert Griffin. Let's come. Pass is incomplete for Moss. Crowd wants a flag. They won't get it on Trufant. It looked like Trufant might have got a hold of him down low before the ball got there. It certainly was close, but he was beat on the play. And that's a play that Santana Moss just has to be able to catch. Now third down and 14. fourth down and it looks like they're going to leave the offense out on the field and hope for a conversion. Well Kirk Cousins did a nice job just keeping that play alive. There actually was enough blockers in. They brought pressure. Marcus Trufant being one of the blitzers on that play but the Redskins just unable to give Cousins the time that he needed. Fourth down and 14. Complete. 
The Seahawks brought pressure, and the Redskins couldn't block it. Jerron Johnson came through with a pass incomplete. And Jerron Johnson has been a big part of Pete Carroll's blitz package throughout the season, and they bring it all third and long, and that's something that Pete Carroll's been known for throughout his career. When you've got long down yardage, make the quarterback get the hand, get the ball out quick, and it's an excellent job there by the Seattle Seahawks defensively. Gus Bradley is a defensive coordinator. He was inherited by Pete Carroll. Bradley was recommended by Pete's longtime confidant, Monty Kiffin. Cut! Bradley coached linebackers for Kiffin down in Tampa Bay. And now it's Gus Bradley as Turbin carries it for four. Gus Bradley is high on the list of potential head coaching candidates. You have to go back to 1983. The last time the Seahawks won a road playoff game, they were in the AFC. And they beat Miami behind quarterback Dave Craig and running back Kurt Warner 27-20 to go to the AFC championship game for head coach Chuck Knox. Second and six. Seahawks have lost their last eight straight road playoff games. No flag on the field as Turbin carries it. Maybe there's one along the sideline. I didn't see a flag, flag either, Joe. Sure looked like Barry Cofield came across early. Yeah, it did. He got across, it looked like, prior to the snap. But there's no flag, just a timeout taken by the Redskins. Let's give you a recap as to what happened today. It started out great for the Redskins. They had a couple of early touchdowns, but then Seattle went to work. Marshawn Lynch carried it in with Russell Wilson as quarterback blocking for him, and then the knee gave out finally for RG3. Two possessions ago for the Redskins, and it has been all Seattle since a 14-point first quarter for Washington. Well, you think about the Seattle Seahawks season and that win that they had in overtime on the road at Chicago and what they did, what that game did for this team's confidence in knowing that they could go on the road and come from behind and win a game. And even when they were down 14-0, boy, it sure looked good for the Washington Redskins, but the Seahawks hung in there. Right. And they played well. Third down and two. Turbin in a tailback. He gets it lying right, lowers his head, and comes up about a yard and a half shy. Timeout is taken by the Redskins. Meanwhile, if you talk defense for Seattle, Troy, their defense has allowed just 70 yards since allowing touchdowns in the opening drive and then the next one by Washington. And they allowed 129 yards and for Pete Carroll's defense and he knows what he wants big up front speed on the edges big secondary they led the league in points against averaging just over 15 points you're going to win a lot of games when you hold the opposition to that well number one scoring defense in all of football as you said at 15 points and what sure looks like Washington was going to blow that out of the water when they scored on their first two possession to get the 14 points but as we know they did nothing after that point and what Pete Carroll and John Schneider have done assembling this roster 284 transactions in the first year alone has been really something to watch fourth down and a long one pass on a 51 yard field goal try Wilson floats it pass caught and a first down to Zach Miller inside the 30 and while there's been so much said about RG3 the job done by Russell Wilson and he is what three minutes away from a road playoff victory what an impressive guy we had a chance yesterday to sit down and visit with him and as Pete Carroll said from the day he was drafted when he showed up he carried himself as though he was the starter right. and he earned that job through the preseason and what a story he is Turbin running right cuts up field a nice pickup on first down Jackson on the stop a gain of four and 
and this would be the biggest comeback win of the season for Seattle and their biggest postseason comeback win ever in franchise history. We were there week one when the Green Bay Packers hosted the San Francisco 49ers, but the 49ers are different. They've got Colin Kaepernick in a quarterback. Green Bay Packers impressive last night when you heard the post-game interview. That game's on Fox Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern. Should be a great matchup. You could hear the concern Aaron Rodgers had yet again for injuries they suffered offensively against the Vikings in that wild card game last night. Yeah, a game where defensively they they did some really nice things. Certainly welcomed Charles Woodson back, but had some more guys get banged up. It's kind of been the story of the Packers, but as you said, a little different looking team there out west with Colin Kaepernick now calling the signal. Second down and six. Lynch back in the game. And Marshawn Lynch. He just does not go down easy. Takes it to the 20. Barry Riley on the stop. Washington out of timeouts. That'll take us to the two minute warning. And so Pete Carroll. A head coach in his third year with the Seahawks. His third try at it at the NFL level. He's got this organization humming and on their way to a win. Two minutes left in what appears to be a road playoff win for the Seattle Seahawks. A team that came in having won five straight, seven of their last eight. Time. Their defense clamped down, their offense. Road Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch who gets it and just fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. And so now as we look ahead we know that it'll be Green Bay at San Francisco. We also now know that barring the ridiculous it'll be the Seahawks at the Atlanta Falcons and I know nobody wants to play the Seahawks team right now. Well they're red hot. I mean to come in here and win a game on the road and now playing with even more confidence having won a playoff game and to go on the road against the number one seed Atlanta Falcons hard place to play. But when you're a team that doesn't create a lot of mistakes and you play defense like Seattle does pretty good formula. This is a fourth down play fourth and four. They fake it to Lynch. And Wilson will attempt to complete it along the sideline, but incomplete for the fullback, Michael Robinson. We know the three other winners. Houston beating the Bengals. Last night, the Packers took care of the Vikings. Earlier today, the Ravens beat the Colts. Ray Lewis and that great career will continue and now the Seahawks are a minute eight away from a win here in Maryland. You know I've always believed too Joe that those teams that do win in the wild card round they're able to play a lot looser in that divisional game than the teams that had the bot. And so this Seattle team having got the jitters out of them in this one I think they'll go into Atlanta and play pretty loose. Pass over the middle incomplete. You saw Paul Allen who was there to save the day for Seahawk fans in Seattle and secure the deal in 1997. And while they were a division winner a couple of years ago, this team is on the upswing and at the beginning of what you have to believe with Wilson and Lynch and the good draft class they had of being good for years to come. Yeah, I, I think both these teams really, I mean, they're so similar in what they have and how they play the game. Incomplete for Morgan. You, know, you think of Pete Carroll in his third season in Seattle, Mike Shanahan, his third season here in Washington. And the real key this year, as we know, is that both of those coaches found their franchise quarterback. So Seattle obviously goes on next week. And this Redskins organization has a lot to be proud of and a lot to build on with RG3 and Alfred Morris. Interestingly, both head coaches took over in 2010. The first draft picks were left tackles. Both are pro bowlers this year. Okun for Seattle as the pass is caught on third down by Moss. Trent Williams for Washington. 
But life's good as a head coach when you have a franchise quarterback. You just have to hope for the Redskins that that is not a lingering serious issue with the right knee of RG3 after what we saw earlier in this quarter. Fourth down and five. The pass incomplete for Paulson. And the Seahawks will take over with 35 seconds left. And Pete Carroll, who gave it a try with the Jets, gave it a try with New England. Two times in the playoffs for the Patriots is going to get a win here. They got that stunning upset at home over the Saints a couple of years ago, but this has a different feel to it. At least in my opinion, they have every reason to believe they can get all the way to New Orleans in the Super Bowl. Well, Pete Carroll even said that back in 2010, even when they won at home in the wild card round against the Saints, he knew that they were a long way from being a good football team. The lockout, he feels, really hurt them last year but this year a young team a great draft class a phenomenal rookie season by Russell Wilson the Seattle Seahawks are going to be around a while talked to Wilson yesterday he said I'm not nervous at all I'm never nervous when I'm prepared and he said ignore the noise as Aaron Andrews said at the beginning of the day two good friends Pete Carroll and Mike Shanahan come together in midfield. Well, there was plenty of noise here early, but it's Russell Wilson and the Seahawks that come on the road and get the win over the Redskins. We'll take a break. Come back here for more as the Seahawks are moving on. Next up, the Falcons next Sunday. Back after this. The players came together in midfield at the end of this game. Richard Sherman of the Seahawks and Trent Williams of the Redskins got into it. And that's the way this game and this day ends in Maryland. Sherman and the Seahawks are moving on. Here's today's player of the game brought to you by KFC. Marshawn Lynch, 19 carries, 131 yards, a touchdown his 11th 100 yard day of the season for the Seahawks their biggest comeback this season and their biggest in their playoff history if you don't bring KFC to your couch gate you're not showing up you're showing down studio coming up 10 point win 24 unanswered points Seahawks headed to Atlanta